Hi, welcome back, ladies. So we're going to look at some embellishments now. Um, we've we've just done the hair, and one of the things that I did me mean to mention was when you're doing the plaits, it's kind of nice to leave a bit over. Um, and then all I've done here, I've just tied a piece of wool um, and I've just cut it so it looks like a bow. So you can do that. So we're going to look at embellishments now to add. So on this one, there are some, I wanted these to just look like little flowers um, on her, her dress, as well as her holding some flowers. I've used this one a lot now for demonstrations, so she's looking a bit a bit worse for wear. But the idea here was that she's holding some flowers. She's a, you know bringing the gift of spring, and then I created flowers on the back of her dress to conceal um, the feathers. So I'll show you different versions of of the feathers as well. So um, I wanted to show you these because I. I make these myself. You've probably seen these for sale and, and things, but um, I found they were getting quite expensive. Um, no disrespect to the amazing women who make these, but um, when you're looking at crafting on a budget. So I make these out of, these are all different mixtures of wool. Um, I get a barbecue stick. I wrap these around a barbecue stick. I dampen them. I have a colander that I just stand the sticks in. Good if you can leave them for a couple of days. But it's a bit like, you know, I know when I was younger, my mum used to tie kind of rags in my hair to give me ringlets and things. That's what these are. Um, they're great for, um, like I do a version of my sheep with these. But they're also lovely as well. You know, and I, I mentioned when we we're doing the hair, if you wanted to add colours through so when I did that plait I could have added that on and all you do is just fix it into the hair and plait it in you know so that could have I guess if you want it to be a bit more funky you can you can do that so these are all they're just all options of doing that now one of the other things you can do with these and I'll show you with this one you can create flowers so I'm just going to loosely wind that around my finger and pop it on my mat. OK, so now you've just got like a little pile of wool. I'm going to use my needle, just put my finger here and I'm going to use my needle just to get that little tail. Move my finger now and pop it in the middle and just poke, just poke. See this bit that's hanging out? bring it into the middle now if you keep bringing the wall into the middle looks like a little heart shape mine now it begins to resemble maybe the head of a flower see how i'm just moving it around take it off if it gets stuck moving it around please watch your fingers i try and keep mine right near the edge especially when I'm felting it a bit more. Move it around. These will stick to your mat. <laughs> Felt a bit more there. Okay, doesn't have to be too precise. Now, if you wanted a bit of colour variation in there, I think I've got a bit of green here. Get a bit of green. Roll it into a ball. Between your fingers. Get that wool nice and warm. Pop it down. See how easy that was? Pick it up with my needle. Pop it in the middle. I can hold the corner of it because I'm not going to stab it yet. And just, sorry, poke, poke, poke. Can you see that now? Yeah. So I'm going to, again, carefully with my finger in the corner. I'm just going to needle felt this a little bit more now and especially in the middle because I want that to be like the centre of the flower. Okay, so there you go. You've got a little flower. Now, if I wanted to use that as an embellishment on here, I can do that. So that's, it's quite a large one. That one, you can do them smaller, but equally, and I'll, obviously I'll show you how to do the decoration 
for um, what she's holding. But that could be quite a nice size for this one. Yeah. The other thing that you can do with these curly ones is, so if I have this one, you can actually attach them. So I just needle felt it onto there, lift it up gently. So on the Earth Angel that I did, if you wanted to add as embellishment at the front and have it dangling down, that looks quite nice, doesn't it? You know? So this, obviously, this I've left this plain, but, you know, you you use your creative imagination. I think that looks quite lovely, actually. Maybe even at the back, because the back can look a bit plain. You could have something like that at the back. Okay, so that's that's one version. Um, making these little flowers as well can be lovely. I did um, I did a whole photo frame, you know, like the deep box frames that you can get. So I made lots and lots of these flowers, and I put them all all together. Excuse me, all together in um in a frame. And uh, I actually have that in one of my bedrooms, and it's lovely. Now this this wall blend is merino wool and sari silk it's got tiny pieces of silk in it and this actually is um, a wildflower version so um, these can be a bit more tricky to fell obviously because they've got different fibers in them however what I do again just manipulate this a little bit and just pour it into a an easy shape pop it down again watching your fingers ladies just very gently I feel with these that they don't need an awful lot I'm doing these bigger because otherwise you won't be able to see on camera but you can do them a lot smaller I'm using the same principle now now and again there's going to be a bit of re resistance because I'm I'm meeting with a different fiber but I just go with whatever it's going to allow me to do. Yeah. I think as long as you can turn it over, see it's got some fibres sticking up there. Turn it over. So I just go where the needle, the needle allows me. I see already what that's looking like. I think these, this, I, I love this wall. I really do. I think it looks really nice. You don't have to add any extra colour to that. It's beautiful. So if I just lift that gently, and maybe, you know, again, put on her. This It is big, ladies. So, you know, you obviously can do them smaller. And then literally all we would do, I'm not going to felt it in properly because obviously I want to do some more work on her yet. But you just, you just felt it in and they'd stay on. Yeah. So you have a go at making some embellishments. If that's not the route you want to go down, some of the other examples are, so with this one, I did. So her, she's got, obviously, she's got the burgundy, the burgundy dress. I did some French knots here as buttons, and I did some ribbon. So if you do do embroidery, you can do French knots and you can put a bit of ribbon. So in terms of this one, I put some ribbon around and maybe I do French knots for the buttons. I mean, even these curly bits of wool would be nice, you know, as a bell if you wanted to do that. So you can use your coloured wool as a bell. Um, this is um, another one that I embroidered. I did quite a lot of embroidery on her. So I did um, some chain stitch embroidery around a collar. And again, these are French knots. French knots are, are really simple. If you don't do embroidery, just go on YouTube. There's some great channels. And then here, this is like a blanket stitch that I did around a cuffs to give her a cuff. Um, but they're, they're just some different, you can use different colour threads around that. If you didn't want to do the wool and the flowers and things like that. So on this one, 
you can see I've used lace. So what I actually did here, I wound the lace around. So if I was doing that on here, I started at the top and I just wound it round, round a waist, across, across, around the back because the wings kind of cover what's at the back anyway. And then I got some of this lovely tool and I put a hole in the middle and I popped it over her head and I wrapped it around her arm. So it looks like she's got like a very sheer netting over a blouse and then a bit of ribbon. So you do that when it comes down to embellishing this. They're just some ideas for, for your version. OK, so you feel free to do that any way that you want to do that. Um, again, it's a, it's a lovely, a lovely part of this. Just getting lost in doing the embellishment. But please just do to so just above the waist here, because when we put this outer merino wool on, you're going to lose and see, because of her hands being closed, if I did anything lower than that, it wouldn't be seen. However, you get away with, you can go a bit mad on the back if you want to. And like I've mentioned before, if you want to use these, you know, as a, as a version with that. So the back, you're going to have wings on there. So save anything if I wanted these at the back of here for instance just wait don't put those on until after we put the wings on and I put the wings on quite near the end because otherwise they just go all bitty and they don't look too good really okay so enjoy doing those creative parts and when we come back we will work on the outer skirt okay um, so I've made a start on doing my embellishments and I just wanted to show you a little tip. So if you are bothered about needle marks on the body, you can just very lightly just rub the fibre and you can do that in circle motion. You just sort of massaging the wool and you'll find that those holes will become less noticeable. I wouldn't worry too much about them because by the time you've got your embellishments on them and you've added the wings and done everything else, you're not going to see them. But it's just a little tip. You can just do that. You can just over the body because this is this is quite firm because you felt it that firm. It allows you to do that without you losing the fibre and you can do it on the arms as well. Just be careful, like what I said about the back. So hold it up at the back if you're doing the back and just give it a little rub and you'll find you can actually on the back, you can do it more like this. Yeah, and you'll find that they'll They'll be they'll be less prominent, but that's only if that that bothers you. With the arms, again, you just need to be a bit careful with the arms so that because you've got your wire in there, but just just give them a little rub. Okay. But I just thought I'd mention I'd mention that to you in case you're starting embellishing and thinking, oh gosh, she looks a bit bit like a pin pin cushion. Okay. Hi ladies. So bye now. Um, you should be at the stage where you've embellished the top part of the dress. I opted to put a little bit of a ruffle in mine with a flower in and just some a sprinkling of, of flowers and a little bit of embroidery around the arms and um, some French knots here for the buttons. So but, um, Please feel free. You can follow me at um, Sally Bonnie Fibre and Art on Facebook and Instagram. You can also add comments and photographs here on YouTube. So please do share your creations with me. I'd love to see them. And obviously, ideas that, that you have. Um, I, I believe that we all have something to offer each other. So any ideas you've got would, would be lovely. So we're going to do the bottom part um, of the of the skirt now for the um, Earth Angel 
spring awakening like i said i kept this in this gorgeous vibrant um yellow it reminded me of daffodils in spring and again merino wool is so lovely to kind of mold and and sculpt so i thought it'd be ideal for this so that's what we're going to be using we're using tops and these are merino tops and I've tried lots of different ways of doing these skirts that range from, you know, basically putting a hole in and hanging it over, which is probably the easiest, um, easiest way. But the way that I want to show you is, I believe, is, is a good start for um, thinking about fur. So if you want to go on and develop sculpted animals like the one I have here, my Highland Cow, um and you want to learn how to do the fur and you know massage the fur out the technique that i'm showing you today is um the start of being able to do that so um i thought let's let's integrate that into the beginning so what we're going to do we're going to start i start at the front I don't know whether it makes any difference, but um, it's where I like to start. OK, so again, we, we just need to be careful with the face. The face is quite delicate at this stage and maybe some of your embellishments are as well. So we're just being a little bit lighter. Now, these lengths of Merino um, can be used as half lengths because when we put that there and hold her up, that's more than long enough. If you just want that to come up to the length of this skirt here, that's fine. It's fine to do that. And what you'll find with these, you know, um, the wool that's underneath is by now it's probably quite flat. So you can tease these out. Be careful not to completely pull it off. Um, You've got merino wool underneath, which is the white, and then you'll have carded um, wool on, on top of that. So you can just tease this out so it's not so flat. And just tease it out with your fingers. Okay. Right, so now what I'm going to do now is just lightly felt here, just to hold some of those fibres in place. Okay, again, just be careful with the face, ladies. You can kind of sit her like this and, and felt round. So I'm just going to felt there so that we're just a little bit more than fibres. Just to, again, just be gentle lifting her up. Just to knit. See, it's not taken a lot, but just to bring them together. I'm going to do a little bit inside, just purely because I've got a little bit of a balding bit there which I may I think I'm going to add a little bit of wool to so if you do have any parts that seem to be a little bald then you know again you know the score by now just a um, little bit of poking bit of jab in there into the wool again don't do it too long you need to keep lifting this wool it is quite delicate at this stage but I'm happy with that it feels a little bit more robust and then I'll do here at the front now if you've got one of those multi punch tools you know you can you can use that you get a little bit more bit more done now, can you see here where I've got this bit of a gap? I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do, you see, I've just folded it in on itself like so. And I'm just going to go around the outside just to bring that together. Again, lift my wool up. I quite like that to be fastened. I don't mind on, um, so when we put the yellow over, See, like there's some gaps there. I quite like that because I like to see the colour through. But on the underskirt, I much prefer that to be together. So you you just have a look where your holes are. Now, if your underskirt, you say, well, do you know what, Sally? Mine doesn't mine doesn't even match there now. 
you can get some more wool and you can overlay that wool. Um, mine's all right, actually, but just to show you, pop on there. And again, we're just adding it. We're just adding the wool there. You can keep turning that lamb's wool over. Hopefully it's not stuck to the foam. Ladies, you need to remember to keep lifting that, actually. If it is, it's not the end of the world. You're just starting out. It's fine. Can't tell you how much I ruined. But I'd, um, remember in the little tip I put as well, where I use that flannelette pillowcase, you know, that, that really saves things. So all I'm doing, I'm just working my way around this underskirt just to bring the fibres together. It doesn't need to be really strongly felted, this, because I quite like, you know, the fact that it gives us that little bit you know, that little bit of um, movement and I just need to make sure that it's not going to fall apart. So that's all I'm doing. I'm working my way around. So this is the bit that I added. So just make sure if you've added any. You're doing that. And then you can see on this side, it's open. So again, just fold that over. I don't want it to be too. I mean, I I do um a wedding a wedding one that I use um I use like different fabrics with that and the you know the tool and so if I was doing something like that and I wanted it really sticking out, there's a different technique that you can use for that to kind of ensure that the dress sticks out. But can you see how this is a bit more fluted now? That's that's what we're looking for. And you can hold her like that and do that too, where the fibres are thick and just bring it in. I like to bring it in a little bit there. That's still a bit loose there, so I'm going to have to spend a few more minutes. So that's probably because I put quite a big piece of wool on there. It is better if you can do you know, like small, small layers, layer after layer and and build them up. You're much better if you can if you can do that, ladies. But I think we there are thereabouts with that now. So just you just keep checking. Just keep checking your skirt. I think there it's a little bit thin. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. See? within here I can do that mix the wool mix the fibers in that way spread them out and just pop it where it is actually a little thin we're not looking you know remember the the lady on the swing that's that's thick that's really well felted that that actually started as just a piece of wool like this but in red um we're not looking for that for that for this so you know don't don't feel like oh it's you know it's very delicate this I mean it's meant to be delicate this um this angel but we we don't want us to fall apart either so that's much better now I'm much happier with that just keep needle felting keep watching your fingers watching a face Just carry on moving it around, melting your fibres together. What's really lovely as well about this is it's like everyone's going to have a different shape, and that's that's just lovely. You know, that's it'd be nice to see that some of you will have different lengths and. You know, that's um that's nice. It'll be nice to see your creations and the difference. And I'm looking forward to seeing your embellishments too. Now I have a little bit of um a gap, so again I'm just gonna fill 
fill that gap. So I would say as a rule of thumb, anywhere that you think, well, actually, um, the lights, the lights coming through there, I can see it. It doesn't matter if it, it's fine, but if you, you know, if you've got light coming through there, you need to do something about that because that's going to be, be far too thin. So I'm just going to do, she's on the side because I'm doing the join. I'm doing the join there. And I think, I think I'm there or thereabouts with her now. I'm quite happy. Do just a little bit more there near the top. Please watch your fingers, ladies. It's dead easy to, to forget. So mine's turned into um, quite a fashion item, actually. A little bit shorter at the front and longer at the back. So, but that's fine. However it is, it's fine because we're going to layer we're going to layer over that and it's it's nice it's nice to to have that difference okay now what's going to happen once you start layering the wool on the top is what's underneath is naturally going to flatten because you're attaching that to it and so you might say well you know what Sally what was the point no what was the point of um of doing that but I like to do that because I think if we start off with some form of shape and we start put putting the you know attaching the fur around the top on that we we do still get a nice shape when we've finished it's going to be flatter but I always think it's worth, it's worth doing that. Okay, so we're at this stage now. Um, I like to just do a bit of extra, put her, get her arms out of the way. I like to just do a little bit extra around the waist. Just bring in that in a little bit more. But just because I want the firmness. Now, I don't really remember earlier, I said to you, um, when we're attaching things, so like, you know, these flowers and things, we need firmness on that because we it, it's almost like a base to adhere things onto. So it's important that this waist bit that we've got is going to be firm enough to put the merino on. Okay. So. Okay, ladies, so we've got the marina wall. I'm just going to divide that. Okay. So in, in terms of if you wanted to make this shorter, we don't do this with the wall because you'll never get it apart. I'll just show because I want this length. So I'll just show you with a, a smaller piece. When you're, um, you're dividing merino, you need to hold hold it and just pull it apart just pull it apart and you get the pieces yeah so not that just ease it yeah so we've got that so that in half is there which may be a tad long but I'm, I'm going to go with this ladies um you use the length of wool that, that you've got because I can I can take off the bottom so I'm just going to go with this for demonstration purposes so we've got our merino I like to spread it spread it out okay so we've got the the half we're going to put that now spread it out it's so much easier to do this when you've got that there Okay. So I'm going to get right into a waist and I'm going to hold the wall below because 
I need to be careful of my fingers. And what I'm going to do to begin with is just, you see, I've got my fingers like that. And I'm just going to ease this wool into a waist. This is where we do need to watch the face. I did think actually, I took it out earlier, you might have seen it on my desk. You've got a bit of a napkin. And just pop it, just pop it over her. It's just that this is bright yellow. Oh, sorry about that, Earth Angel. Maybe a little... Um, a little pocket or something I might have a think about making something like that okay so we're just gently poking in here and then you can just poke a little bit more so what we're looking at doing do you remember like when we did the parting on the head we're just securing this in just have a little look ladies make sure you're on the the waistline there now, if you're a bit low, you can bring it up a bit and just do above the line. Okay, just do above the line. Doesn't make any difference at all to what you're doing. No one's going to see it. But we've just got to make sure that's secure. So this is why we make sure that the felt is firm that we're attaching to. Okay. And then with this, so we've got this now at the top. Again, just poke in. So what I do with this top one, I poke it underneath. On mine, I've done um, a piece of wool as like the bodice of the dress, bottom of the bodice of the dress. Now, there's nothing stopping you from adding a ribbon after if you want to do that. I think it just makes it neater. But I'm literally, I'm going along now and I'm poking just underneath that little belt that I've put at the bottom of the bodice. Okay. So, you know, if you th if you think about this Highland cow that I made, um, this is this is a bit different, the, the wool on this. But I, that's how I started. I just started by, the. Uh, granted, there were smaller pieces, but I just went all the way around, all the way around. And then with his head, gave him a little bit of a parting and a bit of a fringe because they have the, the little eyes covered, don't they? Um, and that's, that's how I did that, you know? So back to the Earth Angel, this is what we're doing. We're going around and we're just making sure it's secure, okay? So that's our, our first piece. Now we can do, like I've shown you with this merino wool before, we can tease out, we can, but because you're going to be handling this quite a bit now while you're making, you know, doing these lengths, I wouldn't worry, I'd leave that till the end. So I'm happy that that's securely in place. So you'd be ready for your next one. So again, you do the same again. I don't know whether that's a help or a hindrance. We, we're teasing it out. This, this is so that, you know, you get a bit more wool. <laughs> Covers a bit more of an area. I like to do it quite thick at the front first because that's kind of what we see more. So that's out a bit now. And then, so what I would do with this, I'm just going to overlap slightly, not too much. You don't want to come, you know, too far over, but just so that those edges, just so that those edges are meeting. Okay. So this is where we have to get a bit clever, like move our arm up out of the way. Okay. So I'm happy. I'm just overlapping that. Okay, use your fingers just to push in. Now, this again is this is just a, a rough placement. So I'm pulling that back and I can see the waistband and I'm just gently, gently moving that around and I can see on the other side where that is just moving it around 
Yeah, I'm still on the waist there. Again, you can have a little peep. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So a bit more secure now. Have, you can have a check. See, I'm still overlapped. I'm still overlapped there. You might start getting stray bits of wool. Don't worry about it. Slow and steady with this bit. Again, using the waist that you've already felted as your guide. Just making sure that all those fibres are in place. And have another look. Yeah, more than happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is just do a bit more. You can use your fingers to keep these bits down. Keeps them away from the needle as well. And I'm just using her waist as my guide. Happy with that. And get over. You can give her a bit of a shake. Bit of a shake. Yeah. And then we're going to secure the top in. So lying her on the side is, is great. Holding it down. And we're using forearm. It's out the way all the time. All the way around. So I'm using that little ribbon or piece of wool I put at the bottom of a bodice. And that's where that's going under. And again, like I said earlier, you can add ribbon, you can add another piece of wool after. I think it's quite nice to do that actually. Okay. So you're getting you're getting the idea, ladies, of that. Okay. So what we've actually created because we've done half and half. So the underneath, <clears throat> excuse me, we can <clears throat> we can pull out the top. We we do like final fluffing at the end, but I think it's nice for you to see as you go along what you're actually achieving by this technique. It uses more wool. But um, I think the finish of it is worth it. So do you see how what I was talking about earlier, that it's worth creating a bit of space under here because you're getting a better shape. So you just take your time. You know, you can have a look and say, well, actually, I want that more over there. So just go back and secure it a bit more. You can come down a bit lower, but remember that that's going to be seen. now. The, the saving grace that you've got is this is what's happening with her hands. So you'll get away with that at the front, but not necessarily at the side. So keep as near to your waistband as you possibly can. OK, so I'm going to leave you there to carry on the same process going all the way around. And then we'll look at the next stage. OK, so I, what I'd like to do is just show you an additional technique um so say you've been working with wool and you've got some smaller pieces these are from another project that i was doing so obviously when i hold them up there they're not they're not as long as those but you can see now with what i've done i've got quite a lot along already already in there so i'm just going to show you how how you can add so say say your wool um you didn't have that much wool or there was gaps and things what you can do is you can take a piece of wool so i'm just going to show you here um with the back so rather than squashing ahead i'm putting that here so we've got we've got the distance there so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add this piece. I'm going to slightly just move it out a little bit and I'm going to slightly overlap. See that I'm happy with that. And then see this tuft I'm leaving. So you're doing exactly the same. You're securing it in place. 
Now, if you remember on the front, I did the double layer. But if you've only got short pieces of wool, you can do it like this. Okay. So I've secured that in place there. It has the seam. And then I, this little tail, I bring over and I just secure in place again. Just exactly the same like I did before. The only difference is this obviously isn't as thick as the other, but it's a piece of wool. You can pull it out, manipulate it. If I needed to add another layer onto that, because maybe, so this is a much shorter layer, I can do that. Pull that out. So I'm going to put it over this one. It is going to be shorter, but that's fine. I pop it over. I do exactly the same. Make sure it's secure. Flip the little tail over. Secure that in place. Okay. So again, when making things like my Highland Cow, my sheep, probably more. I do this technique with much shorter pieces of wool. And it's, I, I guess, from a cost-effective point of view, if you've done one project and you've got much shorter pieces of wool left, you know, if you look now at that effect, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like, oh, it looks like you've run out of wool there. We've just got shorter pieces and, and longer pieces, which is, is fine, okay? So I'm going to carry on and use up these short pieces of wool that I've got just to finish off round the side. And then I'll show you how to, um, you know, just create this nice flute at the bottom. OK. Hi, ladies. So I'm just going to show you now <clears throat> in terms of these two versions. So this one. You can I've used exactly the same um, that I've just shown you with adding the wool on and doing that around. But I've done this as a single layer of wool. So obviously that isn't as time consuming and it's it's probably much cheaper to do. What I've done with this second version, I've done some double double wool and some single filling in wool. So you can see by that a skirt is so much more fuller. There's a lot more wool there. OK, so all I do once I've put the wool on there, I go around the waist. And sometimes I kind of hold her up. And do that, but just go around the waist to secure at the top. Just to make sure it's it's secure around there. And then I give her a little shake. A little shake and you can see then where your wool is falling and very gently with your needle you can move wool around but like I said earlier I, I don't actually mind the gaps I think the gaps are nice and I come to the end you see all these wispy bits so it's designed to have whisper but what I want to try and do is create that into more of a shape. So again, just the warmth of your hands. You can come from the bodice at the top, not too tight, and just stroke the wool. And then mine um, was lots of different lengths. Yours might be too. And gentler pull, not too hard. Just pull and keep these bits of wool. They're great for doing um, pictures and things with or for other projects you can see now where that's it just feels like it's a much nicer you know like with my highland cow i do these textures i'm always messing about with that yeah but if you see in terms of, of the comparison i've used the double wool and i've done additional layers on that and this one i've done single i like them both i like them both but i think this one um obviously offers a fuller you know a fuller a fuller option now what you can do while you're holding it like that this little top part if you want it to come in a bit just very gently poke 
and you do that going round, just gently poke. You might have um, stray fibre there and you can poke that in. Okay, but essentially, we're there in terms of the skirt. You can use your needle to run down and move fibre, but don't, don't do it too hard because you'll pull your fibre off, okay? But we've got, I think we've got a nice shape, maybe even a tulip shape there, which is quite nice. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add another layer. Now I know what I've got, I'm going to add another layer of wool around the waist. Like I said earlier to you, if you wanted to put some ribbon on, that's quite nice. You could add add some ribbon on on too. So I leave it up to you to add some embellishment on there, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, you could at this stage, if you wanted, add see the flowers. I did think about that actually about maybe adding a nice flower on there. So you just watch your fingers. Yes, I quite like that actually. Add a flower there at the front. Yeah. And then I may add um some more, some more wool there. So the kind of final stages of doing this now are getting her into um more of a shape so that you know how we want her is a hands and kind of bowed over a little bit. So we'll we'll do that. Um, the embellishment for on top of the hands, which you can make like on this one, the little flowers. So it's like a gift from spring. You can also, like I did with my Highland Earth Angels, these were flowers um, that I got from my garden that I dried and I just made little poses up with so you could do that. You could do an acorn, you could do um, a little fir cone, you could do anything really, you know, to to add on there, anything anything that you want. You might even have something in, in the house um, that you think, actually that would look lovely, you might need to glue on, but I'm going to show you just how to do it with your fibre. Um, this one is going to be holding um, some flowers, you know, little wool, wool flowers, okay? So I'll be back with you shortly. I'll leave you now to preen your skirts and um, get your fibres how you want it. Thank you.